My name is Alex Resnick. I work for HP and I chair Etsy Mac ISG. And just by a show of hands, how many of you have been to some of the other talks I've been given and are not Etsy Mac members? Well, nobody. Okay, well, if, if somebody had raised their hand, I would have th uh, thrown you a pair of Etsy socks. Because uh, if you had been to previous uh, talks, you would know that that happens sometimes. Anyway, um, we do want to let you know everything or about as much of, of what we are and hopefully uh, get you to appreciate uh, the work that we've done and um, take advantage of it. All right, so part one of this, and um, by the way, in addition to me, there's going to be two more sp sp speakers. Um, I will present Uwe a little bit more properly, but uh, Uwe Rauschenbach from uh, Nokia, he's going to talk about the interaction between Etsy Mac and NFE. That's, a, I think, a critical topic for uh, this particular conference. And then we're going to talk about uh, the hackathons which we've done. So this is just kind of a taster to start with. All right, so what is edge computing? Um, I'll. Uh, You'll see sort of a lot of uh, buzzwords around there, but if you look at 5G, and if you think of 5G as um, applications, um, it, and, 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 and all these new types of applications, w which is where the value of 5G will ultimately be derived, pretty much all of them involve in some fashion or another the ability to put an application point of presence uh, close to the user. So that's what edge computing is all about. It's about creating an application landing point close to the user, right? Or, as in real estate, it's just about location, location, location. Um, so what is, uh, what is Etsy Mac? We are pretty much the only standards organization, and I say standards, not open source, there is a difference. But we're pretty much the only standards organization that's really focused on defining standards uh, that are necessary for edge computing. We've been around for close to four years now, and so I think it's appropriate to kind of talk about what we've achieved and uh, uh, we've tried to cram it all into one slide, so let me just kind of try and go through it. There's a set of standards that uh, we developed. Uh, so for API framework, uh, for principles and guidelines for how to write API, a, a, a critical key set of standards and service on exposing key services via st standardized APIs, and then a key set of the standardized APIs for management of or and orchestration of applications, and that's the part that Uwe will talk about quite a bit more t today. Because we are a multi-access edge computing group, we started out as mobile, but we're really access, um, not so much access agnostic, but uh, what we do can be applied to all types of access networks. We do work pretty closely with 3GPP in the sense that we're designed to work with 3GPP networks very closely, and we are um, interacting with what is going on with the 5G architectural definitions in 3GPP, and you can kind of, um, I'm not gonna go into it, but we do have a couple of papers um, on this, um, so I'll highlight those a little bit more. We do, um, we do white papers that talk about how you actually um, kind of create complete solutions that involve edge. We publish our completed APIs in an, um, in, I guess we, you, you could call it a serialized fashion, essentially the, the API descriptor header files that you need are published and freely available for people to use. So as you're going about implementing things uh, in an, in an uh, Etsy Mac compliant uh, fashion, the software developers don't have to read these specs. They can go and get the APIs. We do proofs of concepts. We do hackathons. And we also started doing a new concept called a 
um, MEG deployment trial, which is really kind of um, informing um, the world of actual uh, deployments of um, Etsy MEG or MEG systems that include Etsy MEG standardized implementations. We have 83 members, I believe, as of the last count. Um, and the leadership team comes from the um, from sort of across the industry. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We have three vice chairs from Vodafone, from Nokia, from Huawei, and two more officers in the leadership team from Intel and from uh, Hayavi. So you sort of have compute um, more traditional vendors of telecom equipment, one of the key operators, and they test and, and uh, system uh, company, and you can see who the rest of the members are. So I wanted to spend some time on this slide because it's packed with all kinds of goodies. Um, what is really the value of Mac? Well, one of the key values is this key set of service exposure APIs because what they do is they give you a standardized way to expose the services in a restful fashion to application developers. If you think about one of the key issues in edge computing that's going to be out there is you're going to have these systems that the operators expose. And then you have a huge community of software application developers. You need to have a single standardized set, uh, a set of APIs for them to interact. So if you're looking at some of the key things that we have, start with these specs. Mac 11 is a published spec, and that's really the key set of APIs that any Mac platform has to expose and has to be compliant to if it's going to be an Etsy Mac compliant platform. It includes the kind of things that you would think of as being necessary if you have um, a Mac platform. The ability to redirect traffic, um, the ability to do some DNS uh, operations which are necessary if you're going to uh, do service chaining across, uh, uh, for services that are identified with URL, URI endpoints, as pretty much most modern uh, services are, an ability to find out what services are available on the platform and for services to register themselves, and then a couple of more things. So you start here, and then what you'll see is we've done, we've also standardized a set of key service APIs which we call features. And a feature is something that an Etsy Mac compliant platform doesn't have to support, but if it says it supports it and supports it in an Etsy Mac compliant fashion, then it has to support this particular API. So a radio network information exposure, that's a key feature, a, a rich contextual based location API, that's a key feature. Uh, this is named weirdly, weirdly, but it's a very simple API that's really necessary for enabling enterprise services. And if you're interested in why, there's an enterprise white paper that we published, you can pick up a copy there. And then a bandwidth management, which kind of goes with this one and this one, and it allows you to differentiate how services are handled. And again, for example, in an enterprise setting uh, where um, uh, net neutrality rules will never apply, right? That's a, uh, that's a key thing that you uh, have. And then the other one that's already st st standardized is this uh, device um, application API, which is an API that allows devices to request uh, that a uh, that a service be deployed um, at a particular Mac location. So these are all available on that site called Etsy Forge, and I'll show you that. And then there is a couple of here that we've thrown into this slide that we're developing already. There's actually more. Right, so Mac 28 is, is the Wi-Fi of a, uh, equivalent of this Mac 12. There's a Mac 29 API that's doing the same thing for uh, fixed access, and there's a bunch of other APIs that go in there, and we welcome people, if you think you have a service API that is um, really needed 
um, or if you have a service that's needed by the industry as a whole, we welcome you to come and work with us to provide a standardized interface so that it can actually be used by the industry as a whole. So, talked about this stuff on the previous slide, but what is the process and what are the, the sort of the overall foundations for what we do? An API framework, which is a um, set of standards, so really primarily uh, MAC003, which is the framework and architecture, which kind of shows how we see things fitting in. It's normative, but the architecture is a reference architecture, right? So it's a reference to understand what we were thinking. There's other ways that you can architect things and use the same API, right? Um, but it s sort of gives you an understanding for what, um, for how we go about th uh, thinking about it. An API principles document, um, right? And uh, that's documented in, so some of these, things and this is documented in Mac 009. So if you have a service which you do not necessarily feel you need to standardize or it needs to be standardized, but you want it to have a, a look and feel of, of, of an Etsy Mac standardized API, this document gives you the principles for how to do it so that it has the, talked about this on the previous slide, right? And then there is a set of, another set of APIs for management and orchestration of applications at the edge, right? And that's what Uwe is gonna touch on, that, that, that gets into how we also work with NFE, but that's another area that we do st st standardization in. All right, this, um, I will be very quick, but our, uh, so, our APIs, once they're completed, are published in, on the site. Uh, same forest site that has an Etsy NFE area and mirrored on GitHub. Pretty much everything that we do will be there. It's an open API hub. Um, we're in the process of upgrading to open API 3.0. Um, so uh, please go and look at that if you're developing software, whether you're developing a, um, a service slash virtual appliance on the vendor side, or if you're developing an application and you need to um, know how services are going to be exposed, this is your source to go to. Uh, proof of concepts, much like Etsy NFV, we've been running these from the very beginning. This is a very useful tool for a group of companies to come in and say, look, We've got something here that the world ought to know about when it comes to Mac. We, we help you promote it. We kind of give it a stamp of approval that yes, it is something that is um, Etsy Mac relevant. We help you promote it, so it's a good thing to do both ways. That's really beginning to evolve now into this Mac deployment trial and what an MDT is, is it's, an, it's, an, it's meant to be an evolution of a proof of concept. We did the proof of concept, now we're taking it into the field. We just started this, but in fact there's one already in a pipeline, so the next conference that we show these slides, there's gonna be something in there. Uh, hackathon, we just held our first group of hackathons and there's weird reasons why they were a group, but they all worked on the same topic. There's a press release that should come out today, but uh, we held a group of hackathons. There were a total of well over a dozen, I think 15 teams between the three sides. Went very, very well. We are gonna continue doing this. And um, for those of you who attended the Etsy and the V session, you heard a lot from Pierre about plug fests. Why are we doing hackathons? And we're foc and we will do blockfests as well at some point. But why hackathons ahead of them? One of the key issues with Mac, and as opposed to, for example, with NFE, is the need to interact with application developers. Right? NFE is between the operators and the vendors. Here we have the operators, the vendors, the application developers. How do you get application developers engaged? 
Well, they don't read standards, but they do come to hackathons and they pay attention to hackathons. So it's a new, it's a new initiative that we started and we will be doing more of them. I, I don't know at what frequency there. Quite a bit of effort to organize, but we will for sure be doing more of them. If you have an idea for a hackathon and you want Etsy's help to organize it, please come and talk to us. We would love to work with you. Um, White papers, I talked about this. So the purpose of, of these white papers is when you look at standards quite often, what you see is, uh, okay, this interface is specified here, this interface is specified here, and then, and then you go, how do I actually put my system together? Um, and people have pointed this out to me, and I'm sure to others um, in Etsy Mac, as, hey, this is something that you guys aren't doing, but you should be doing. Well. As a standards group, no, you really don't want a, a standards group to tell you how to put your system together, right? There's multiple ways to do it, but we did realize that it, th there's probably a benefit in providing some guidance on how to do things from the experts that are in a group. So that's what the white papers are doing. There's two out there, one on Mac and 5G networks and one on Mac and Enterprise this, 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 this setting. And you can pick up all of these from the website and there will be more. All right, so those are all the things that we've kind of, we've done and we're doing, right? What is the ongoing work, which is the phase two work? So let's sort of look at the work status from really a standards a group point of view and look at what we've done. In phase one, so in our first work package, first draft, we did technical requirements, framework architecture, proof of concept process, API framework, right? Those are all the key document. Here is the set of, the, uh, of this infrastructure of the service management APIs that I talked about, and then the service exposure APIs which are kind of like the platform as a service aspect of Etsy Mac. And then a couple of key studies. And again, this one will, we will be highlighting here. All right, so that was our first roughly three year period. What are we doing in phase one? Well, all of this work is going to continue. In fact, there are some gaps that need to be filled in that we didn't get to. We're beginning to focus on industry segments. So there's active work going on on vehicular. Uh, but uh, we are beginning to look at industrial automation, VR, AR, and it's really a, an aspect of how many members we have, right, and kind of sizing what, what the group can do in parallel to the, to the size of the membership. So we could definitely start on this earlier if this is a keen but particular interest to anybody in the group please come and get engaged with us and um, we can definitely s start driving that work as well. Um, some key studies on container support and what to do with network slicing and how Mac fits into it. Normative work for integration with NFE, this is not going to be a separate work item because in most cases it's something that has to be done in these other specs as well as in NFE. Um, the other types of access, and then these things that I talked about, which is the, the engagement with the developer community. And the last one is testing and, and compliance, basically moving ahead and providing answers to a question of what does it mean to actually be compliant with Etsy Mac. Um, so here are the various open work items you can see. The move that we've also made here to, to truly be multi-access. Uh, so a couple of highlights on, 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 on some of these work items and the questions that we're kind of uh, ad addressing here. Application mobility, right? We did a study as part of phase one and it's really a question of how do you what do you do if you have a mobile client that's attached to a radio access network at one point and you essentially have a Mac 
host a MAC point of presence at that radio access network, and now it moves, and because it has moved, eventually the nearest MAC point of presence is somewhere else. So you potentially have to move the application instance that it's talking to. Not a simple problem, especially when the application is stateful. So that's, that's being addressed here. Uh, V2X service API. Well, the first question that you might ask is why do you need a special uh, service API for vehicular? The answer is, again, there was a study, MAC22, and what was identified in that study is that there are some specifics of um, the environment around connected cars that need s certain things to be very specifically exposed. We might rename this eventually to have a more generic name, but you can kind of see some of the issues around low latency, um, information on PC5, interfaces, 3GPP, and so on, right? So depending on whether this will stay very specific to vehicular, address vehicular, and um, but be a more generic API, we might change the name, but that's kind of the ongoing work. Um, what, wireless LAN and fixed access, um, just like we did with MAC-12 and exposing the key information that applications can benefit from in terms of understanding what's going on in a 3GPP network, doing the same thing for Wi-Fi networks and fixed access networks, that's ongoing work. Um, testing and compliance, um, that's MAC-25. We've actually gotten money from Etsy to hire people to help us out, just like NFV did, um, right? And the first phase is really understanding how, what are the test procedures um, and the test architecture to define a process that allows you to say, yes, I am compliant with Etsy Mac because I've ran these tests and I passed these tests. Um, so that's ongoing work and it should be out there soon. And um, and then, oops, I'm going to fold these other study items. Um, not sure if that's a GR. So um, what to do about lawful intercept and retained data? This one's almost done. There is a couple of things that are left over there. Uh, but support for network slices and s support for what to do about containers. Containers are a critical topic, especially in edge computing, I would say much more so than with NFE because of a uh, low footprint uh, computationally that many edge deployments have. The good news is right now as we're talking about this, there's really not much of an impact to what we standardized and how we went about it if you were to go from a VM-based uh, uh, kind of edge um, development or com to a container based. Um, and both of these should be done in early 2019. And that's the end. Um, I want to conclude this with, uh, by, uh, by emphasizes that we are the leading voice, in fact, the only voice in, st in standardization, but we are a leading industry uh, uh, voice around Mac. Um, we don't do everything around Mac. Uh, we do focus on, st on standardization and then doing the things that we need to help move Mac ahead faster and sort of close out those gaps. But if you want to participate and if you want to actively do that, um, I will put out an open call. Please come and join us. We are a lot easier to join and work with than I'd say pretty much any open source community. S certainly a lot cheaper. Um, and we do have quite a bit of work, as you see. Um, this is a, I have time in this half hour for a couple of questions. So, any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, you see only Bosch or? Only Bosch from the verticals, from the, from the industry. Um, so it's just curious, right? Yes. Because so make is about uh, industry so use cases. Yes, we need right. more members from the vertical 
industry. I'm not sure if it's only Bosch. There may be one or two others. I saw only um, you, you may be right. What I didn't put in here is we do work with industry alliances. So we have um, agreements in place with Vrara. Um, and I believe there's, we're pretty close to one with some key folks in the automotive industry um, and, um, uh, and also on the industrial automation side. So one of the things um, that happens is we are a standardization group. When you look at verticals, and I'm very happy to have Bosch there, but, uh, and, and, and they're actually active, but um, when you look at verticals, right, they see themselves typically as consumers of st standards, and in fact, as consumers of things where standards are buried inside of them, right, but they don't have to worry about them. So they kind of look at our group and they say, okay, it's awesome that you guys are going along. We don't need to come and participate actively. I try and make it clear that this may be a little bit of a different case, but I think the right way of working with them has always been by um, having a relationship with the alliances where they are present, right? So for automotive, it would be, for example, 5GAA, and, 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 and having a healthy interaction with those groups and allowing them to feed requirements back to us, and I think that's ongoing. Um, another way for verticals to get involved is let me go back here, right, uh, where am I? Here, use this, because there's a way, this is a true open API uh, uh, um, site. There is a way for you to not just use it, but report issues, report bugs, which we will be addressing. We have that process in place, okay? Other questions, yes? Yes. So, do you mean that with that application, the VM would have to move to another robotic robot to grooming rather than moving to a robotic robot to exchange the states, for example, okay. or subscriber info? So, so um, the answer is if you need to move the application instance between mobile edge hosts, then what happens? Right, and that's within the scope of Mac. And I say if, right, uh, okay. w there's no requirement being put on it needing to move, and I will say that in most cases you should be designing things so you don't have to move a stateful application instance, right? But if you found yourself in a, in a situation where your solution requires you to move AVM, then how does that actually work? Okay? Yep. So I appreciate you guys are actually doing a white paper on the lawful intercept piece. I just want to ask, like, your personal opinion, how big a hurdle is that going to be to a large implementation? Um, you know. So we're not, so that's not a white paper. That's actually a, oh, okay. a formal output. Um, how big of a hurdle? Uh, it's an issue that needs to be addressed, right? Um, it, it went, so I've been looking at this type of an issue for about 10 years, uh, going back to a small cell forum, and it was a hurdle, right? I think today the situation is 5G applications have to run at the edge. So if it's a hurdle, then 5G doesn't happen. That's not, that's not Etsy Max problem. That's a problem for the whole industry. Uh, so yeah, I think it will be addressed. I mean, now is the time when it will be addressed because of 5G. Uh, so. You're not not worried about that. I, I am a little worried about how it how it will be addressed, but I'm not I'm not worried about if. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, you 
orchestration, uh, centralized orchestration uh, versus uh, edge orchestration of these containerized environment? Kubernetes, anything else? Um, so we do a fairly narrow work in terms of our scope, um, right? And, and we look at how to do orchestration for applications at the edge from like the management entity. And I think in that one, we've kind of figured out there's maybe a couple of small things that, that need to be done, but not much. The question that you asked is a much broader question. Uh, no, there's no orchestration solution today that distributes easily or works easily in a centralized fashion when the compute nodes that, it, that it's orchestrating a way out on the edge there. However, I can tell you that I know OpenStack, Kubernetes, Acraino, right? They're all working on it actively, so it's coming. All right, well, my half hour is up. Um, I want to introduce Uwe Rauschenberg, who is, although not on the leadership team, is uh, truly an expert in this field, in NFV and ZSM. For those of you who, who were in the, Z, in the ZSM forum, you probably heard him speak there. So um, he's going to take over and talk about the interaction with, uh, with NFV and how we work with NFV.